Good to see you. I have your uh, notes of your strategy outlook in which it's titled Less Crisis, More Opportunity. It's like 63 pages long, Tom. I mean, if you need 63 pages to tell me why next year is going to be good, maybe you're trying too hard. Well, we figure if, you, if it takes you a year to go through it, you'll be into 2024. Um, <laughs> yeah. You just forget about next year. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, I, I think 2023, there's so many arguments that the probability of a double-digit gain in 2023 is far higher than people expect. Um, but I think it does start with inflation and the Fed uh, because, you know, people talk about monetary policy lags, which is true, but it, it affects both inflation and the economy. Inflation has already fallen by half in just the past few months and is annualizing at 4%. This is before we've really seen the bite of the monetary hikes. On top of that, Earnings could do better next year than expected because, you know, things like the PMI, the dollar and supply chains are actually supports for, for earnings next year. And I, I think that maybe the most important thing to consider is, is two other things. One is that it's rare for stocks to have back-to-back -back declines. Um, in fact, in a year after a decline like this, and you say, well, earnings have to be good for stocks to have double-digit gains, that's not true. Out of the 21 instances stocks had declines in a single year, the following year, 18, were positive years. Seven of those had negative earnings growth. So stocks can do quite well next year as long as we're talking about this crisis on inflation ending. And I don't know. I mean, I just think today's FOMC, they, they do have to make some changes because, you know, the second paragraph there says the Russia-Ukraine war has been an accelerant to inflation. Oil and wheat are below pre-invasion prices. I, I think that has to come out. And if that does, I, I, to me, this is a Fed that may has a little bit less work to do because you don't have the war inflation pressures. That's going to be a more predictable Fed, and I think that's good for markets. What, what, I've asked the question at the top of the show, what does the market need to hear to go higher? What don't you want to hear today? Well, I think the biggest risk is if the Fed says, well, we've had progress on inflation, and it's visible, because remember, last FOMC, and several Fed members said there hasn't been any visible progress on inflation. We've had two months now of soft inflation. Three-month annualized inflation is down to 4%. It's been cut in half. But if the Fed says that doesn't matter because we don't trust forecasts and all we care about is wage inflation, well, that would be quite hawkish. But that would be something I think the, the bond market would challenge. I mean, the two-year yield is telling us the Fed has one hike and that's it. The two-year yield after today is going to be below Fed funds rates. And I think, to me, that's why uh, it would, they would have to be quite hawkish to shock markets. And, and there's a possibility the markets would just challenge the Fed on, on a view like that.